How do you know God was a healer if you didn't need healing? How do you know God is a deliverer if you never needed deliverance? Amen. How we know these things is because we've been met with those challenges in our life, but God delivered us from them. That's how we know he's God. Chapter 4 and verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4. Amen. And we're going to pick up at verse 16. That's the very last verse in that chapter. <clears throat> and it reads, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And we would like to speak from this thought this morning in my time of need. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. in my time of need. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In my time of need. <clears throat> Amen. I'm being a father is a wonderful gift because I almost feel as if I'm always learning. Always learning from my children. You feel like you gotta teach them something, but as they go through life, they end up teaching you something about life um, and I look at my daughter my oldest Lauren she look like me and sometimes she act like me and in her trying to be a big girl she tries to do things on her own take it upon herself I know she likes to you know she sees me get the cereal out I ask them what they want to eat and say some cereal so I pour them some cereal and she said, let me get the milk. And then she got this big jug of milk, can barely hold it. I'm like, here, give me that before you, before you spill all this milk everywhere. Let me help you out. And, you know, she, she's got a little pride in her like me. She'll take it upon herself to do things. And she'll try her best to do it. But one thing that I, I seen in my daughter is when she can't quite get it, she gets frustrated, she gets mad. But the first thing she'll do is she'll start calling me, Daddy, Daddy. And then even my other daughter, Leah, would be Mommy, Daddy, she, whoever she can get a hold of. And she say, help. And she said, help you. And really, she means I need help. But really, she's saying, help you. I'm like, you ain't helping me, girl. <laughs> I'm helping you. But at the same time, it's their eagerness to get help. And when something doesn't go right, they call on me because they believe I have the answer. They call on me in confidence. Even in their frustration, even in their, uh, them being upset by whatever it is that is causing them trouble, they humble themselves enough to say, I need help. And when I think about that, we all have to learn how to humble ourselves sometimes to receive the help that we need. And when we do call on the Lord, 
we can have the confidence that he will answer us in our time of need. Now, it was Solomon who said, the wisest man to ever live, he said, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. There's a time and a purpose for everything. And with that being said, there is a time when we're going to need God, but also, too, there is a time when we will experience extreme pain or heartache. But in the words of Solomon, there is even purpose and time for pain. It doesn't seem like it because we really don't like to deal with pain. I don't like to deal with uh, uh, those circumstances that may bring me trouble. I don't really like to deal with it at all. But Solomon, in all of his wisdom, said there's going to be a time will you, when you will experience pain and there will be a purpose to that pain. There will be a purpose to the trouble that I'm going through and the things that I'm experiencing. But the hardest part about understanding Solomon and all of his proverbial wisdom is really understanding that statement. The hardest part about that statement is finding the purpose in pain. That's the hardest thing. It's a wise saying, but when you're going through and it seems as if everything is falling apart, it's hard to just sit back and reflect and say, oh, man, I'm just learning so much. Oh, man, this is great. <laughs> I'm getting a great understanding while I'm getting stabbed in the back. Man, that's the hardest thing sometimes is finding the purpose to the pain that we're experiencing. Because sometimes it, it seems without cause, it seems without reason, it seems as if it just came out the blue. And because of the anguish and the toil that we're experiencing, it seems as if it's just here for no good reason other than to make me upset. But more or less, if I were to look closely at what Solomon said, he said there is a purpose to it. There was a Greek poet who said, he who learns must suffer. And even in our sleep, pain that cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart. And in our own despair against our will comes wisdom to us by the awful grace of God. Now awful, he's not saying it was awful, but matter of fact, how great the grace of God is. But if I could play on words for a moment, sometimes the grace of God feels awful. Sometimes what I'm going through and what I'm experiencing, it's hard to call it grace. When you've lost everything and you're at your wit's end and you just want it all to end, it's hard to call it grace. It's, it's easy for people to tell you that God is being good, but when you're faced with the situation and the hardship that is faced in front of you, it's hard to say glory be to God sometimes, especially when I'm trying to understand it. And that's the hardest thing, to find the purpose. Solomon, you said there was a purpose for everything. There's a time and a purpose. But sometimes I've been in something so long that I don't have a sense of time. And I've been dealing with it for so long, I get lost, and I don't have a sense of purpose anymore. At first, it was okay, and I'm treading the waters, but now this is a really bad joke, it seems as if. This is really bad situation. I don't want to deal with it no more. So how do I get out of this thing? How do I overcome? But... Just like the poet has said, we must learn from our suffering. It's not about what we see in it, it's what we learn from it. And so wisdom only sometimes is only gained through what we go through. 
there's a certain type of wisdom that is a wisdom gained through experience, a wisdom you wouldn't have gained otherwise. Uh, somebody can tell you something, but it's different when you have to do it yourself. I can tell you all about it. You know, I can tell you where to go. I can tell you the streets next to it. But you have to journey down the road for yourself to get to where you need to be. There's some things that you won't ever understand until you experience it. And there was a, a young lady by the name of Victoria Arlen. Uh, when she was, I believe, 11, she found herself with a, de a debilitating disease that left her in a vegetative state. She slowly lost uh, uh, operation of her limbs. She lost the operation of movement in her way. She couldn't even talk. She couldn't even tell you. She could see and experience everything, but she couldn't do anything about it. It came suddenly. Right? It came just out of control. When she, be, when she uh, turned 16, I believe that's when she began to uh, uh, gain function. She had to relearn how to walk. She had to relearn how to talk. She had to relearn how to do everything. And, and this is what she said. She said, the climb might be tough and challenging, but the view is worth it. There is a purpose for that pain. You just can't always see it right away. And that's the thing. She said there's some mountains you got to climb. And in order to see the beauty of what it means to be on top of it, you've got to climb it. And, and see, that's the trouble with us all the time is trying to tackle and climb those challenges that lie before us. Uh, she eventually got some motion back, and she actually was a, 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 a winner or a gold medalist in the Paralympics, or the Olympics for those who are uh, uh, paralyzed. But at the same time, what uh, trying to find the purpose in her turmoil would be hard. You're already young trying to find your purpose, and then you find yourself in something you have no control over. Have you ever been in something that seemed so debilitating you couldn't help but to, to, to feel some type of way because this isn't what I expected, especially at 11. At 11, I'm expecting just to run around, but what happens when you can't run around like everybody else? What happens when your life is totally different from everybody else's life? I didn't grow up how I wanted to grow up. I didn't have everything that I wanted to have, but I find myself a victim of circumstance. And God, you telling me I got to find purpose in this? Uh, sometimes the purpose is only realized in self. It, it's a more of me finding an inner strength uh, to keep living because sometimes uh, there are some things that make us feel as if life isn't worth living. That life is just what it is. But as you continue to go forward and as you continue to march forward, uh, uh, God has to put in you a fire sometimes to live. Uh, uh, see, sometimes what we think is life is not really life. Uh, God has to show us that by taking that life. Uh, and then what he does is he infuses us with life eternal. Uh, he says, you didn't know the true meaning of life uh, until you had to fight for it. Uh, oh, glory be to God. And sometimes uh, God is telling us that what you're fighting for now isn't worth fighting for. Uh, but let me give you a different view. Uh, let me show you something different. Uh, let me show you uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what is the real meaning to life. Uh, oh, glory be to God. Uh, and so sometimes there are some challenges uh, that are put on us uh, that make us understand some things. Uh, see, some of us, we, we're like the Greek, uh, uh, the Greek character Sisyphus. Uh, uh, Sisyphus was the guy that pushes the ball up the hill only for the ball to roll back down the hill. And then he goes back and he's cursed for eternity just to push a ball up the hill. And once he gets it to the top, it rolls back down. <laughs> Have you ever had life like that? <laughs> 
just when I got it to the top, it's going right back down. And then when I push it back up again, there it goes again. Oh, my God. And I'm trying to find the purpose to this paradox of life. But sometimes what God is trying to show us is that there is no real meaning to this life without me. You're pushing a ball uphill that will eventually fall down. But I am your help. I am your confidence. There is no purpose in what you're seeking. But your true purpose can only be found in me. Somebody shout glory. And see, sometimes the thing that we need to experience uh, that can't nobody tell us about uh, is the goodness of God. Uh, that hill you have to climb, uh, that wisdom you have to gain through experience uh, uh, can only be experienced uh, <clears throat> when I got to climb the mountain depending and trusting in God. Uh, mm. In Psalms, the psalmist said, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. I can't know God as a refuge or strength without learning to depend on him. Oh, glory be to God. I got to learn how to depend on God, and I got to learn how to lean on him in my time of struggle. Now, the thing is, is that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. When you deal with that word present, it means at the present time. It means that God is. It means he's right there. So even though I know there is a time and a purpose and there's a season to everything under heaven, but it doesn't matter what time. It doesn't matter the purpose. One thing I come to understand through the scriptures is that God is present and he's presently a refuge. He's presently strength. He's presently help in my time of trouble. So it doesn't matter my circumstances circumstances it doesn't matter uh, what I'm going through uh, uh, but one thing that I've learned through all my troubles and my struggles uh, is that God will be there uh, now when we say God is a refuge uh, when we say God uh, is our strength uh, really we are saying that God is our salvation uh, as a matter of fact he is our greatest glory understanding that my greatest triumphs in everything that I've experienced and everything that I go through is based off of what God is doing in my life. And so sometimes it takes some things for us to know God and to see him as he is. There's some things you went through only to reveal to you who God is. I want you to understand something. God, you can't discover God. You can't read about God. God must be revealed. I said God must be revealed. You can only learn of God by what he shows you of himself. And so he puts you in situations. He puts you through certain trials and tribulations because he wants to reveal unto you who he is. He wants you, he wants to reveal unto you his greatness. He wants to reveal unto you that he is the God of the universe. He wants to reveal that I am good as a matter of fact I am great and I can pull you out of any situation that you find yourself in but in order for you to understand the length and the depth of my love for you to understand the greatness of my power I gotta pull you out of some great mess sometimes God had to pull you out of some great things when you was about on your deathbed God had to pull you out. When you almost lost your mind, you were ready to end it all. But God pulled you from the edge. As a matter of fact, you've been at the edge all your life. But the reason I ain't go overboard was because God was there with me. I done made some mistakes. I done went crazy. But I ain't go that crazy. Mm. 
And see, the thing about it is, uh, is sometimes you feel defective. Uh, sometimes you feel as, 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 as if there's something wrong with me. Uh, why am I thinking this way? Uh, why am I feeling this way? Uh, why am I thinking like this? Uh, but God is saying, uh, ain't nothing wrong with you. Uh, amen. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, there are things that are common unto man. Uh, but one thing I want you to understand is that I can deliver you from whatever thought you got, from whatever pain you may experience, from whatever hurt you may feel. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Oh, but understand that the, the only thing that is wrong with you is not even a fault. The thing is, is that you're sensitive to my call. See, the thing about it is, I wouldn't feel bad if I didn't have something move in my heart you know I'm not like a psychopath you know how people can do certain things and not feel a thing but when thoughts go through my mind and yet I feel it when I see certain things and yet I feel it it's because God is working in me you thought it was a defect but really it was God's hand on you you thought something was wrong with you but it was God pulling you and trying to draw you closer to him uh, ain't nothing wrong with you uh, uh, sometimes uh, you gotta tell yourself uh, that God is good uh, and everything gonna be alright uh, ain't nothing wrong uh, I gotta shame the devil uh, let him know he's a liar uh, and the truth ain't in him uh, but I got to learn uh, how to trust in God uh, somebody shout glory Glory be to God. Oh, the psalmist also said that we got to trust in him at all times. Because if he's a present help in my, tri in my time of trouble, which means he's there with me at the time. Which means I got to learn to trust him at all times. No matter what I'm going through, I got to learn to look to God. No matter what I'm experiencing inside my heart. I gotta trust him. Oh, glory be to God. It was the false prophet Balaam who said that God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So even when I see my situation and I know what God says, but I see my situation, but I know what God says. God said, I'm not a man. So don't you lean on your earthly wisdom but you lean on what you know about me oh glory be to God I'll pull you through mm. It was Solomon uh, in his proverbial wisdom uh, uh, that said unto us, uh, confidence in an unfaithful man uh, in our time of need uh, is like standing on a foot out of joint uh, or having a tooth out of its socket. Uh, that's why God said, I'm not a man uh, that I'm going to lie to you. Uh, when you call me, uh, you can depend on me. Uh, it's when I depended on people uh, that I understood people wasn't like God. It was when I tried to rest in somebody trying to love me, but I realized they couldn't love me like God could love me. It's when I went for the embrace, but I got the cold shoulder. It's when I looked for somebody to pat me on the back and encourage me, but I had to just encourage myself. It was when I was at my lowest that I learned that only thing I can trust in is God. It was when I looked in your eyes, but they looked away in disgrace and shame. That's when I learned that I had to look to the hills from which cometh my help. It was when I wanted you to understand, but you didn't understand me. All you did was talk circles but I needed some substance and that's when I learned that I got 
to depend on Jesus. I got to go to his word. And I got to learn to trust in him. Even though I can't see him, I sure can feel him. I don't feel nothing else. But I feel something inside of me. And it feels like fire. Shut up in my bones. It feels like something compelling me. It feels like something propelling me to go forward. I can't quit here. I can't die now. God's got too much in me. Somebody shout glory. Glory be to God. Uh, God is not like a man uh, that he should lie. Uh, I can't put my confidence in man. Uh, and so glory be to God. Uh, it was Solomon who said uh, that be not afraid when sudden fear comes. Uh, sudden fear. Uh, things that come to terrorize you. Uh, it's the things you didn't plan for. Uh, it's the things that crept up in you uh, that you didn't want to deal with. Uh, but now you got to deal with it. Uh, now you're faced uh, with what you feared the most sometimes. Uh, have you ever been scared of uh, some things? Uh, have you ever opened your closet uh, and the skeleton walked out? Uh, it didn't fall out, it walked out. Uh, I got some stuff uh, that's terrorizing me. Uh, but Solomon said, uh, don't you be afraid of sudden fear uh, and desolation uh, of the wicked uh, when it comes uh, for the Lord shall be thy confidence uh, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Uh, and so one thing he's letting us know uh, is there's some things you ain't got to be afraid of uh, no more. Uh, my demons can walk around me, uh, but I know God is with me. Uh, he's a very present help uh, in the time of trouble. Uh, I see my enemies uh, walking around me uh, like vultures. Uh, I see my faults uh, ever before me. But God, he's right there with me. He's there. He's my buckler. He's my shield. He's my refuge and my strength. He's there with me in the middle of the storm. So who shall I fear? Mm. So I can't be scared. Uh, tell your neighbor, don't be scared. Uh, don't you be scared. Uh, oh, glory be to God. Uh, uh, the psalmist would go on to say uh, that better uh, is trust in the Lord uh, than to put your confidence in men. Uh, better is the trust of the Lord uh, than to put your confidence uh, in princes. Uh, better uh, is confidence in God. Uh, I'm talking about the confidence of God. Oh, glory be to God. Ah, oh, glory. Now, when we fast forward to the New Testament, the same sentiment is echoed by the writer of Hebrews when he said, Cast therefore not thy confidence, which has great recompense of reward. I can't shake off my confidence. I especially can't shake off my confidence in God because at the end of the day and ultimately uh, that's all that I have uh, Lord all I have is you uh, ain't nothing else I can do uh, so in my time of trouble uh, uh, that purpose uh, that I find in my pain uh, the thing that I learned the most uh, is how to trust in God uh, and how to have confidence in him uh, it's how not to run from a fight uh, but it's standing flat footed uh, with all the ebullience I can muster in myself uh, and saying, devil, you a liar. Uh, you ain't going to beat me up no more. Uh, I've been beat up so many times. Uh, I've been left for dead so many times. Uh, but I got confidence. Uh, I'm getting bold. Uh, my back is against the wall. Uh, and I ain't got nothing to lose. Because uh, I ain't got nothing uh, but Jesus. Uh, I ain't got nothing uh, but the Lord. Uh, I ain't got nothing nothing but my praise that's all I got so I'll shout tell somebody I'll shout I'll cry I'll holler I'll stop but whatever I got to do I won't be pushed around but I'm keeping my confidence in God somebody shout glory 
Glory be to God. All I got is my confidence. All I got is the Lord. And I got to stand on it. Everybody's gone. I'm alone. But I know I got Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. I can't let this go. But I got to hold on to it. Even if it kills me. Though he slay me. Yet will I trust him. Then I got to hold on to it. I can't let it go. As a matter of fact. Lord, hold on to me. Like I'm holding on to you. Don't let me go. But I need your help. Somebody shout help. Help me, Lord. Glory be to God. I need your help. I need your strength. I need you to pull me from my struggle. Somebody shout glory. Glory be to God. Oh, I thank you, Jesus. Oh, now this leads us uh, to the text we began with. Uh, let us come boldly uh, before the throne of grace uh, that we may receive uh, mercy or that we may obtain mercy and grace uh, in the help uh, or in our time of trouble. Uh, oh, glory be to God. Uh, now, this is what I want you to see. Uh, he said, let us therefore uh, come boldly. Uh, the word boldly, uh, it's referring to confidence if I can come before the throne of grace confidently why can I come before the throne of grace confidently oh there's three things that I want you to see if you bear with me oh glory be to God the writer said let us therefore I want you to say therefore Therefore, it means for that reason or purpose. Anytime you see the word therefore, you don't have the whole story. So you got to go back. And when we go back to verse 15, the Bible declares unto us, For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, and yet without sin. In other words, we we have a high priest uh, who understands what we're going through, uh, that knows our struggle. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, he had victory uh, over it all. Uh, he was tempted in all points uh, and was yet without sin. Uh, he knows what I'm feeling. Uh, he knows my infirmity. Uh, he knows my weakness. Uh, so I can come boldly uh, before the throne of grace uh, when people don't understand, uh, when I've been ushered and dejected uh, when I've been broken down uh, when you don't get it uh, and when they don't get it uh, I can always go to God in confidence uh, he'll always get it because uh, he said I've been there uh, I've done that uh, I beat it uh, I can help you to beat it uh, but you gotta come to me uh, and get the help you need uh, oh glory be to God uh, therefore uh, for that reason uh, I know God uh, is an understanding God, a loving God. Oh, glory be to God. The next thing is that we may obtain mercy and grace. Notice he said that we may obtain mercy and grace. It's not an illusion, meaning that I will always receive mercy and I will always receive strength in my time of trouble. So now you have therefore that we may obtain. I know what I what I'm getting when I go to God. Uh, see let me put it like this. Uh, see, when you deal with uh, uh, this aspect of faith, uh, I thought about it deeply. Uh, you know, when you go down uh, to McDonald's, uh, everybody know what a McDouble is, don't you? Uh, uh, it used to be my favorite thing because it was a dollar. Uh, uh, everybody know uh, what a McChicken is. Uh, now, I can go uh, amen, to Japan, uh, and they would still have uh, that famous McDonald's French fries, huh? the famous McDonald's sandwiches. Huh? A, McDo a McDouble in Japan huh? is a McDouble in Chicago. Huh? Uh, a McDouble in Chicago huh? is a McDouble in New York. Huh? A McDouble in New York huh? is a McDouble in Lansing, Michigan. Huh? What are you saying? Huh? I, 
have a certain confidence when I go to God because I know his quality. I know what to expect. So no matter where I'm at, I know what I'm getting. So when I go to God, I know I can receive mercy. When I go to God, I know I can receive some grace. When I go to God, he ain't going to get funny or give me nothing crazy. But when I go to God, I know what I'm getting. Somebody shout glory. I know what I'm getting from God. I ain't getting nothing funny. Oh, glory be to God. It may not look like the picture all the time, but it still tastes the same. That's the thing about grace and mercy. It may not look like I want it to look, but it's always going to taste the same. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He didn't say look and see. He said you got to taste this. You got to experience this. This is something you got to try. It's got to get down in your belly. It's when you experience rivers of living water flowing all up in you that you'll understand what I'm talking about. There's something I can't tell you about. You got to experience it for yourself. But I can come boldly because I know what God has got for me. It's for me, but it ain't just for me. It's for you. It's for everybody. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Somebody show glory. Glory be to God. And the last thing that this particular scripture deals with is is that we may find or to help in the time of need. Tell somebody in my time of need, I can come boldly before the throne of grace in my time of need. Whatever that need is, whatever that struggle is, even if I did it to myself, even when I'm on the ropes, when I'm depressed, and suicidal when I want to give up on life when I want to walk away from the job when I want to walk away from the marriage when I want to lock myself in like a hermit when I want to give up I can find some help in my time of need have you ever needed God I think the song was I need you now Lord I need you now I need you to be a present help. I need you to be my refuge. I need you to be my salvation. I need you to be my life flow. I need you to be my energy. I need you to be my sanity. I need you to be my feet. I need you to be my hands. I can't get away unless you help me get away. I can't hold on unless you help me hold on. I can't run unless you help me to run. Oh, God, help me. Lord, I need you right now more than ever. I dare somebody just call on the Lord. He said, if you call on me in a time acceptable, I will be found. If you learn to trust me and lean on my word, I'll bring you out. If you learn how to just keep stepping in my grace, if you learn how to stand when you've done all to stand, when you stand some more, stand in me. Let me love you like no one else can. Let me help you like no one else can. Lord, we need you right now. Not tomorrow. Not yesterday. But right now. Somebody shout glory. Glory. I need in my time of need. Everything the writer was saying was that God would be able to be found in my time of need. (laughs) My need or my crisis. Your crisis may not be my crisis. See, there's some situations that people don't think are important unless it's their situation. So we all have a different crisis 
We all have a different crisis event, something that turns everything upside down, Every, something that shakes us to the core, that terrifies us. But God, he'd be there for us. He would help us in our time of need. Oh, glory be to God. There's, there's those situations that get to us that we're so busy trying to figure it out. We're so busy trying to fit, make the pieces fit. I'm so, I'm so, so, so trying how to just work it out and make it just work. Have you ever been just trying to just make it work? I don't even care. Give me some duct tape. I need this thing to work. But God is saying you don't have to make it work. Because I'm a very present help in the time of trouble. So you can refer to me at any time, at any day, uh, any time, or any night. Have you ever been there fighting for your life in the middle of the night? Oh, glory be to God. You feel this ominous presence. You feel it down in your spirit. Have you ever felt like you were going to die? You don't know why, but you felt like the day was the day I'm just going to fall over. I've been trying to shake it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I try to smile. I put on my best face to try to cover up what I'm really experiencing. I'm scared because if anybody knew what I was experiencing, they would look at me like I was crazy. I knew I couldn't trust people with it because I got a track record with people. I realized that this situation is a situation that's going to cause me to battle. There's some things that will cause you to battle. There are some things that will cause you to struggle. There are some things you got to wrestle with. Every day you wake up in the morning, you wrestling with it. You eat your breakfast Fish, you're wrestling with it. Huh? You drink your pop, you're wrestling with it. Huh? You're at work and you're wrestling with it. Huh? Trying to fight it from overcoming your mind and taking you over and taking you to a place huh, that you might not come out of. Huh? And so you're drowning on the inside. Huh? You're gasping for air. Huh? You're smiling, huh? but you're gargling. Huh? And you're crying out. Huh? Have you ever been crying out for help on the inside? There are times I don't want people to see, but I wish somebody could see. And if somebody could see, they would reach out and grab me. They would come and tell me, this is what you need to do. Have you ever wanted somebody just to prophesy to you so that you would know it was God? Because I've been feeling some type of way for so long. I just need a touch from you, Lord. I just need you to touch my mind. I I need you to touch my heart. I need you to invigorate me in my spirit. I'm trying to find the strength to do what I know I can't do. My hands are tied up. Oh, my, my, my mouth is tied up. Every time I try to talk, I start stuttering. But God, if you can hear me, if you can hear me on the inside, Lord, if you can hear me, in this dark place I'm like Jonah in the belly of a whale Lord just give me another shot Lord pull me from the muck and mire Lord put my feet on solid ground Lord do you hear me Lord I'm crying out Lord I need you Lord Open the door, Lord, open the door, open a window, but let me in. I'm ready for you to help me. I'm in my time of need. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. Somebody show glory. I need you. I need you. I need you. See, it's when I'm so full of this that it has to come out. See, the thing is, is we have a tendency to hold things in. We've, hold, we've held it in so long it's become toxic. 
and we be, it begins to degrade us from the inside. These things, if we don't let them out and let them go, they eat away, and it is corrosive to the soul. You're so worried about how you look, but you need to worry about where you're going. It's not about a look. It's not, a how, it's not about how people receive you. But the ultimate reception I'm looking for is that of God. I need God to receive me. I can't hold on to old traditions. I can't hold on to my pride. There's some things I know I can learn. God has put us in a place to learn and get what we need from him. Not for you to argue about what you used to do or what you know. Who you sat up under. Who your bishop was. But if you need help. God is saying, come boldly before the throne of grace. You can be confident that where I have you, I've placed you. And where I've placed you, I've anointed. I've anointed a way for you to overcome what you need to overcome. I didn't place you here just for you to sit here. Not when there's help right there before you. That one thing I learned from my daughter. She was frustrated, she was crying, and she run and said, I need help, Dad. And we got to run to God and say, we need help. <clears throat> In your time of need. But I've learned that my time of need is all the time. Every day I escape death. I escape almost drowning. I escape almost losing my life on a daily basis. I'm always taming the lions and tigers and bears. <clears throat> See, I've learned that before David could become king, he would have to learn how to carry himself like one. <clears throat> See, he was chosen in the back as he tended to the sheep. But while he was tending to sheep, he was fighting lions, tigers, and bears, right? We thought that prepared him. But the, the thing that prepared him, that propelled him into his destiny is when he came home from Ziglag. It was when his own king was chasing him, searching to kill him and take out his life. He comes home and finds his village pillaged and destroyed finds his wives taken and those men that trusted him they find their life turned upside down <clears throat> he settled in a place called Ziglag he left to go fight in a war he wasn't going to fight only to come home and find his life upside down everybody looked to stone him they hated David because of their own anguish Sometimes people hate us for the decisions that we make because we were in the forefront. There was nothing that he could have done. But somebody always needs somebody to blame. Even in our life, we have a tendency to want to blame God. But it was David that came. There was nobody to turn to. But the Bible specifically brings us to a place and it illuminates in everybody's eyes that David encouraged himself in the Lord. He had to learn to encourage himself because the place where God was taking him might be a lonely place. It might be a place where nobody can understand nor be able to counsel you in. But you got to learn to encourage yourself in the Lord. The Bible says he grabbed the ephod, which was a priestly garment, only lawful for the priest to wear, and he went before God himself. Let us come boldly before the throne of grace. I have confidence that God ain't worried about this and that, but he's worried about 
mercy, love, and compassion. He's looking for me to come to him. So David fell down. He went before God. He called out to him and upon him. And he asked him, he said, should I pursue? And if I do pursue, will I overtake? And God told him, pursue, and you will overtake. And you will regain all or recover all. He said, the first thing he said is, shall I pursue? I've learned there's some things that aren't worth pursuing in our life. We're chasing things that you're never going to capture. You're trying to chase the affection of somebody you'll never get. You're chasing a feeling that will never make you or sustain you. You can't sustain it. You're chasing it, but you'll never get it. But if I do pursue it, will I overtake it? Will I catch up to it? And if I catch up to it, can I recover? But the one thing that God showed me in it all is that you can recover. No matter what you've lost, no matter that feeling of loss, you will recover and God will meet you in your time of need. See, David was in a time-sensitive matter. They had left and been on the journey with his stuff. So it may be a time he wouldn't catch up with them in time. But God met him where he was. And see, the thing about time is you don't have enough to waste. Don't you waste your time asking God about stuff he done told you to go get. Quit crying about stuff that you know you can recover. Quit crying about stuff that he told you to go pursue after. And if you don't get it, that's on you. Time waits for no man. There is a time and there is a season to every purpose. There's a time of war and a time of peace. And when God tells you to go to war, you got to go to war. You got to fight like your life depends on it. But God is right there with you in the time of need. Whatever you need, whatever time it is, God is right there with you to provide for you, to help you through whatever you go through. <clears throat> Don't you waste another moment, minute, or second not doing something about it. It's time. God is simply saying, it's time. You may not feel like it, but I'm there. And it's your time of need. You can't sleep it away. You can't cry it away. You can't look the other way. But it's your time of need. Today is the day of salvation. Hear me, today is the day. Not when it's convenient. Not when I feel like, you'll never feel like it. You'll never, ever feel like what you need to do. You just got to do it. And see, <clears throat> I would like to quote a, a musician he said, grace is what matters in anything, especially life, especially growth, tragedy, pain, love, and death. That's a quality that I admire very greatly. It keeps you from reaching out for the gun too quickly. It keeps you from destroying things too foolishly. It sort of keeps you alive. It's grace that's keeping you alive in your time of need. Don't you waste the grace of God, but obtain mercy and help in your time of need. You can come right now. You 
can receive the grace of God. We've got water. We'll baptize you in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You just got to believe God. Amen. <clears throat>